Before we get started, I just wanted to quickly thank Lemmy for lending me the first Spear of Annihilation in the entire game. You need level 115 archaeology to make the base spear, and he had such a sizable lead that he knew he could lend it to me for a couple hours and still get it back and sell it as the first spear in-game. I really appreciate it, and this video would have been at least a couple days later without him. With that being said, the Spear of Annihilation can be upgraded to a tier 92 Masterwork Spear of Annihilation. That's what we did at the start of this video. Our spear is already upgraded and we've augmented it with the Lunging 4 perk. It's time to test this thing out. This spear has a special effect and it is extremely powerful. Just how powerful you may ask? Well, we're going to get into that pretty much right away. The special effect makes melee bleeds last 50% longer. Now, before you ask about a mutated barge bleed or a massacre bleed, those are not technically bleeds, they're damage over times. There's a difference between them and the spear will only affect these three melee abilities. Dismember, Blood Tendrils, and Slaughter. Now that we've covered what this thing does, let's do some testing. Let's start things off by taking a look at Dismember. It's a basic ability and it's the one that hits the least of the three bleeds. With a Lunging 4 switch and the Strength Cape, the max hit on a Vuln target is 1404 damage. And with those aforementioned boosts, Dismember will hit 10 times, which means that for a basic ability, this will max at just over 14,000 damage. The even crazier thing about this, the bleed lasts for so long that once Dismember stops hitting, you'll only have a chance to use one more ability before you can actually Dismember again. So you can keep a boss Dismembered for pretty much the entire fight. Next up, Slaughter. Slaughter will max 1310 damage per hit and will hit a total of seven times. But here's the catch. If you can walk your target or make your target move when you use Slaughter, it will actually triple the damage. What this means is you can multiply that 1310 by three and then again by seven. If you do this, you will find that the max hit of a Slaughter with this spear is 27,510 damage. That is absolutely ridiculous. For a threshold ability that doesn't stack with Berserk or with the Zara's Godsword special, that is just completely insane. When you're not in a Berserk or a Zara's Godsword special, Slaughter with this spear is now the strongest melee threshold ability in the game. When looking at Tendrils, it will hit seven times, the same as Slaughter, but one of those hits will be doubled. According to the tooltip, the first hit is supposed to be the doubled one, but with this spear, it doubles the third hit instead. The maximum damage from a Blood Tendrils under these exact same conditions is 18,856 damage. If you were to max all three of these abilities on a boss, you'd be able to deal 60,406 damage just with your three bleeds. I'm also going to mention here that I was low HP for my Darok Relic and I was also using the Dragon Battle Axe special attack, but upon further testing, it turns out neither of those two things actually work with bleeds. No idea why, but they don't, so you don't need them. At the Corp Beast, I was able to get the boss to literally half HP just with my three bleeds. Although Corp is technically weak to spears, monster weakness does not increase incoming damage, so this 50,000 damage from just three bleeds could be seen at any boss in the game. It just happens to be a very good example of how strong this is. I think the spear comes down to two main use cases, either as a bleed switch or as a main weapon. As a switch, it is without a doubt best in slot. You'd augment it with lunging 4 as well as aftershock 1 to not lose stacks, and you'd use it for those three bleed abilities specifically. This is personally what I'll be doing with this spear. It takes the place of my old lunging switch, but this time it's for all bleeds, not just dismember. In this kill, I didn't have the best phase 1, but somehow I was still able to finish phase 2 at 57 seconds. My first tag on that phase was at 31 seconds, so that was a 26 second phase where I'm not using Berserk. You'll notice if you watch it back that the boss is bleeding with this member pretty much constantly for the entire phase. I tried something similar on phase 3 as well, where I used Dismember to get up to 100% adrenaline before my Berserk, and you'll see, phase was pretty quick. <laughs> That's enough! Oh no, it's gonna keep bleeding forever! Can't see this one too. Ready? That's enough, because the bleed just... <laughs> oh no! And then we can Dismember again! Yes! Dude, I'm never gonna fail these again. The bleeds are just... Look at that! It's gonna keep ticking, I can leave! The other use case is as a main weapon. And this really depends on the price. 
because it's relatively easy to get compared to other tier 92s that don't come from skilling, I could see this being a very good choice for a first tier 92 if the price settles under 600 million coins, which is pretty realistic in my opinion. The spear tip is a luck of the dwarves proc at the level 115 archaeology spot, and assuming the price of materials and masterwork trim stays semi-consistent, you're looking at that spear tip plus about 300 million coins to make yourself a tier 92. It certainly isn't better than Azaros Godsword that gives you access to the black hole special attack, but for general abilities, they'll both do the exact same damage and have the same accuracy too. The special effect is just even more free damage on those bleeds, and the weapon would be a very good option for that. Once again though, it really does depend on the price. Just look at the sheer amount of damage I'm able to bleed to clear this phase 3. Aside from my Zaros Godsword special and a Blood Assault, I camped the spear for the entire phase, and it's just ridiculous. The HP bar drops like it's nobody's business, and this weapon is very powerful. Overall, it's a very fun effect that greatly increases your damage potential as a meleeer, specifically when your Berserk and or Zaros Godsword specials are on cooldown. I can't wait to experiment with it more and continue to bleed my targets for mass damage. One thing I will say though, unless the Inquisitor's Staff is absolutely incredible, you could see melee escape sticking around for quite a while. The Inquisitor staff is currently bugged and the special effect doesn't work, but they're fixing it on Tuesday and I'll be testing it out then. With all that said, I hope you all enjoyed the video, I hope you're all safe, have a good one, and I will catch you in the next one. Oh, I got the free Zerk! Yes, dude, go! Hurricane? I'm still on 90% adrenaline right now. That was so much fun! And goodbye.